This video isn't about all the technical info and different college majors like the others, but rather some advice for people considering engineering, and even students currently in college for engineering, that I think are important to know. Tip 1 is to try to maintain a 3.0 GPA or higher in college. Now GPA is not everything, but I put this because many engineering companies and graduate schools will not accept you if you have lower than a 3.0. Your resume may never be seen by a human because a computer will just filter out your resume assuming you apply online. This isn't true for every company or school, but it will keep a lot of your options open if you keep that GPA or higher. But GPA is not the most important thing. If you can't maintain that GPA, just make up for it with extracurriculars, projects, and engineering clubs, and keep a good network, which is tip two. Networking is extremely important for everyone in college, but as an engineer it will help so much to get to know as many people as you can in the field you're interested in. Join engineering clubs and meet people, get to know your professors who probably have contacts, maybe you'll meet friends who have parents that work at engineering companies, go to career fairs and so on. Do whatever you can to get to know people. A common thing you'll hear people say is who you know is more important than what you know, and this is very true. I mean, there's a fine line because you got to pass your classes, but you get the idea. Don't be shy and go meet people over your years in college. Three is to apply to summer internships as soon as you can. Honestly, if you do not have big plans for the summer, apply for internships even after your first year in college. It's not necessary, but it only helps. Engineering internships are paid, at least all the ones I've heard of. You could make 15, 20, or even $25 an hour. All these are wages I've heard of people making. I've even heard of more at larger companies like Apple. However, according to Payscale, the average engineering intern in the United States gets paid about 16 an hour, and the highest paying skill is programming and knowledge of Java, Python, C, and C++. If you have a 12-week internship working full-time, that's $7,200, $9,600, and $12,000 respectively in just one summer. Plus you increase your network, improve your resume, may guarantee yourself another internship the next summer, and could even guarantee yourself a job once you graduate if they keep hiring you. Even if you have really no experience besides the few classes you've taken, what do you have to lose by trying? Some companies have high school interns, so you could be plenty qualified for some internships for all you know. If you don't do this, then another good idea is to take summer classes to get some of your credits out of the way, even if it's just general ed classes. Overall, I'm trying to say you should be productive in your summers because you will thank yourself. You will have semesters or quarters where you need to take a lot of units. There will be weeks where you have maybe two or three midterms and an essay due, and it will be stressful. It's those times where you may wish you could have at least gotten rid of that one GE class that you don't even want to spend your time working on when you have more important things to do. It's still going to be stressful, but every little bit helps and instead you got to complete it in the summer when you have free time and not much other stress, and if done at community college or online, it'll be so much cheaper. Then tip five is to figure out what companies you wanna work for after school as soon as you can. Once you know or at least have an idea of where you wanna work and what projects you wanna work on, you can try to get into relevant engineering clubs, do a senior project relevant to those companies, and apply to internships at those companies or similar ones. Employers love to look at resumes and see that you've done projects or worked at companies very similar to what they do. Tip number six, which is more of just something you should know, is that some companies will pay for your master's degree if you work for them. This is not a guarantee, but I had to include it because you should be aware of all the ways you can save yourself money. If you're planning on a master's degree, one option is to get a bachelor's, then just get a job at a company that offers this. You can work for them for a year or a few, then go back to get your master's, but have it paid for. You'll get a free or cheaper education if they pay at least some of it, have a guaranteed job when you're done, and likely will come back to a pay raise. Remember, it can be hard to go back to school after you've been working, and yes, this is not a guarantee for everyone watching. Not every company will do this. So don't put all your eggs in this one basket, but keep it in mind just in case because you should be aware of all your options. I obviously don't know all the companies that will do this, but I can say that most of the large defense companies do have this as an option. And last is advice for really any college student, and that's that you need to have good time management. Like I said, there will be weeks where you have like three midterms and a paper due, and in college sometimes a class will just have one midterm and a final, 
so you can't really afford to do poorly. If you're struggling, go to office hours instead of figuring it out on your own. Go to tutoring sessions that your school will offer in most subjects. You will regret procrastinating during weeks like this, so be sure to find how you study best and schedule out how you should be spending your time. And going along with this, there's a chance you may do poorly in some classes or even fail some. If that happens, don't worry too much at first. It happens to a lot of people. Figure out what went wrong and how you're going to change your study habits. Find tutoring, go to office hours more, and so on. I know I started this video with emphasizing GPA, but the average engineering student at most colleges gets lower than a 3.0 GPA, but they get jobs. Just remember to pick yourself back up, keep networking, apply for internships, do extra projects besides what's required in lab, and build that resume as much as you can. After you get that first job after college, your GPA really doesn't matter anymore unless maybe you end up going back to school. So that's the list of some of the important things to keep in mind if you are going into engineering or currently are going through the curriculum. And as two pieces of bonus advice when it comes to saving money, one of the most expensive things you can do is get your textbooks from your university's bookstore. It might be your only option in some cases, but getting an online PDF, which yes, you probably will find someone who has one, renting the book, which many websites offer, buying or borrowing from a friend who's already taken the class, buying it used online, all will save you a ton of money. Also make sure the textbook is actually required. Sometimes they say it is, but it really isn't. And also, if you get that internship or part-time job during the summer, try to use it to pay off any loans you may have. And some of this information like GPA requirements, internship wages, and all that will differ from person to person, but also country to country. So be sure, as always, to do your own research. But I hope this helped. If you like this video and want detailed information on science, math, and engineering majors, like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.